What's happening, everybody? It was a long weekend in the world of fantasy football news. We're breaking all of that down. We're talking Shady McCoy, Damian Williams, maybe sneaking a little Carlos Hyde here and there. Stay tuned. You don't want to miss any of this episode. Hey, Foot Clan, Navy Federal is proud to serve over 8 million members, including active duty military, the DOD, veterans, and their families. You'll receive a lifetime of membership benefits with Navy Federal, and you can easily access accounts, transfer money, pay bills, and deposit checks with the Navy Federal mobile app. Visit NavyFederal.org slash footballers for more information. Call 1-888-842-6328 or download the Navy Federal Credit Union app. Message and data rates may apply. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Welcome in to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Andy, Mike, and Jason back. <laughs> Guys. Doing some reps over there? Guys, it's week one. Oh, it's week one. We made it. We made it. The extended bye week is over. <laughs> oh. Mer- mercy. Mercy rains down <laughs> from the heavens <laughs> upon us all. Welcome into the show. Excited to be back with you. Enjoyed, uh, I guess, a reprieve yesterday with the families. Didn't have a show. First time we've never had a Labor Day show, which means that it takes us three or four years to learn that a lot of people are off on Labor Day and we Mm -hmm. should take the day off and give our employees a day with the family to prime up before the season. Oh, we didn't we didn't give them the day off, Andy. We We made them come in and just I wasn't here. Clean mop. Yeah, we were toilets. (laughs) I think I did make Brooks do some social media. I think just like a brief amount. From his work computer, were you though. Were you doing the breakfast in bed with the mimosa while you did that for me, Brooks, though? I mean, you were enjoying the day? Nah. Nah. <laughs> nah. Okay. Not enjoying Not the enjoying day. the Wishes he was here. But week one is, is upon us. It is. And the weekend was wild and crazy. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> a Bananas. little bit. And everybody wants I, – I don't know if you guys know how Twitter works. But they want to know everything immediately. Mm-hmm. You want when news breaks, which we're going to get into so much of it today, from Lashawn McCoy to Damian Williams, Carlos Hyde, Laramie Tunzel, all all this news. But you need to know immediately the entire future of the world on Twitter. It's it's a imperative, and I get it. That's our job to speculate on those things and figure it out. But news takes time to develop a real good picture of what's going to happen and so we have i think a little bit more than we had on saturday night and sunday and sure but while you were over there being measured i was just a volcano firing off hot takes as soon as the news broke i thought you were a man sobbing in the corner with his damian williams shares was that not was Uh, that not your actual state no, no, there was there was some uh, <laughs> some weeping. There was some words that we don't talk about on this <laughs> podcast that may have been muttered under my breath. Uh, well, but I pulled myself together. Here's here's some headline news for the Foot Clan out there getting ready for Week One. Today, the Week One rankings will be up on the website. The Start Sit tool will be up on the website. We'll have all of our basically. This is the transition day into Week One. People have been drafting. People drafted all weekend long. People, People are, are still, still drafting. I love my oh, team. Come on. You're supposed to finish it. That was impressive. Thank you. And you are both <laughs> simultaneously correct. People are still drafting. The season has not begun. It will begin Thursday. Uh, point of clarity because I need to say this. <laughs> I misspoke on the last show when I inferred that Josh Gordon played on Thursday. I somewhere in the deep recesses of my subconscious I thought the Patriots always play on Thursday to start the year they play on Sunday so I I had made the comment that you need to make sure that you move a player out of your flex into a position spot on Thursday so that would be all Packers 
all bears. The strategy still holds. The strategy holds. The advice was garbage. <laughs> the specific example was horribly inaccurate. So apologies on that. Um, you can find us on Twitter at the FF Baller. Still time to get in on the signed Alvin Kamara jersey giveaway at footclangiveaway.com. And I also want to encourage people, if you do want to be a part of the Megla Bowl, the deadline is basically, yeah, thank you, Mike. Is that a ping pong ball? No, that's uh Oh, that's a clock. That's uh the little timer. Little Ind timer. Egg timer. Ending doom. Yes. But uh you can go to jointhefoot.com. All of our Patreon supporters get a free entry into the Megla Bowl. There are over sixty five hundred of you now in the biggest best tournament of all time. This legitimately, as far as a a true season long league, I don't know if it's the biggest that exists. But it might be. Yeah. Thanks, so that Jason. won't stop us Thank from you. claiming that it is. That it could be. That it could be. It's going to be a lot of fun. So without further ado, no quick question. Too much news to cover. Let's do it. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. I have no idea how long it will take us to get through all the news, roster cuts. As long as it takes, Andy. As you say, I don't care how long it takes. I've been wanting to talk with both of you about all of these issues as much as I have the Foot Clan because we were off this weekend and we were, we were trading Slack messages and we were tweeting. Mm -hmm. But We didn't get a chance to argue in person. It, certainly. Truth. And that's really what fuels us <laughs> yes yes uh my blood needs to be boiling to exist in this world the bills released running back LaShawn McCoy this was uh I'll give a, a shout out to Mike who Thank on you. our show on Friday specifically said please don't cut Devin Singletary or make any adjustments to your bill shares until this weekend happens because all offseason long, the moves the Bills made pretty much pointed towards releasing LeSean McCoy. All the words they said were related to, LeSean's our guy. I've been told he's the guy. He's the number one guy. He's my best guy. And now he's gone. Yeah, the money pointed to uh, getting rid of him. And that's really – that was the cause when we first started talking about Shady – possibly being released was just because look at the money I mean he was owed more than so many other star running backs combined in the league they go out and they sign Frank Gore they bring in TJ Yeldon and draft a running back it looked like it would happen and then all the verbiage all the usage in preseason we kept saying like we were you know, off you know off the show we were like, man, it, it just looks like they're trying to feature him for a trade or yeah. highlight him or something. Yeah, it had to have been for the trade. And just no one was going to trade for LaShawn McCoy with the amount of money he was owed. Yeah, no question about it. So McCoy, gone. Let's talk about what remains in Buffalo before we talk about where Shady went. Devin Singletary, Frank Gore, TJ Yeldon. That is the backfield in Buffalo. Marcus Murphy also released um, one of the other running backs in the room. But Singletary shares, uh, those that, of you with Devin Singletary, rookie running back, we're very excited about this news. Frank Gore has looked like the starter throughout the preseason, continues to be ever the Frank Gore. <laughs> He's infinite. Uh, um, so how do you boys see this shaking out for – the duration of this season? Like, how would you treat... Because I know the questions. Right. They don't just want to... Uh, our listeners don't just want to hear that. They also want to hear, what do I do week one with the Buffalo backfield? So where are you with those two questions? So I believe it will start out as a timeshare. What was great for Devin Singletary and hopefully for the majority of our listeners, you were able to draft Singletary incredibly late when the backfield was muddled on the surface. But... The shady release, it just it really felt like it was going to happen. That's why Singletary was worth the draft pick. Unfortunately, after the news, Singletary just he got in his rocket ship and he and he launched off to Mars. And people started paying up way too much for for Singletary, who they think okay, automatically Singletary is the leader of the backfield. He's going to be the primary guy. I don't think that's the truth. 
I think that Frank Gore and Singletary will share the first and second down role. And then TJ Eldon, who's a great pass catcher. Meanwhile, Devin, er, he'll play third downs. Devin Singletary, that's he doesn't really have a huge production profile, especially his last year in college. So I'm concerned that he'll be able to work in on third downs. But Singletary, is an, he is a great stash if you were able to get him in that ninth or tenth round or even later. I, I don't – personally, I don't think he's going too high in drafts right now. Really? I, I, w I would draft him higher. Right now he's in the ninth round at, at, in like the That's last just week. ADP but hasn't caught. Sure. I'm saying like people were asking I, me, I will take him in the sixth round. That's where people were taking him. And that's, that's what I would tell people personally to do. They did not cut LaShawn McCoy because of Frank Gore. They cut LaShawn McCoy – because of Devin Singletary. He has come in. He's looked electric. There's been some people around the team that say they believe he can be a workhorse three down back. He has that skill set. That's what hurt the ADP. It was not just the release of LaShawn McCoy. It was an accompanying, accompanying uh, beat writer who suggested that Singletary would be featured right out of the gate, and you combine those two things into kind of the whirlwind for Singletary. I... I think Singletary will establish himself in time. I do not think it will be immediate by any stretch of the imagination. And for all, I don't know if you've seen this. I mean, you know, this was a surprise to them. This was a surprise to Frank Gore. This was a surprise to Devin Singletary. Gore came out and said in practice on Monday, he said, I thought it was a joke when he heard that LaShawn was released. He said, 10 minutes later, I, I, I noticed he was actually serious. Like, he didn't know this was going to happen. So, uh, Gore has looked better than Singletary in the preseason. No. Yes. Gore's he, looked fine. He's looked Gore, better Gore's than you expect. Singletary's had a very moderate preseason. He's three points something a carry. Yeah. And he's, um, he, Gore has been four something a carry, and he's looked better to me. So um, the the problem the with, future is Singletary. The present might be Gore for a few weeks. Like he maybe he turns into a three down guy, but that's what has to happen if you're going to start moving him way up your draft board. No one was excited to draft Shady McCoy. No one. He was going sometimes after Devin Singletary in drafts and he was the starter like it was it, yes we were reading the tea leaves that he should be cut but that was a really last second cut and at that up till that point no one felt like the starting running back for Buffalo had value but that was because it was shady I mean the the truth is early in the offseason I said that there's no point in which I would draft Shady because he was 31 years old last season. Okay. Last season he looked terrible. That was early in the offseason, just saying he he was on his way down and out as a player. I mean, that's that's just how it looked. And now you've got a, a guy coming in that was high draft capital. One of the most telling translating stats, there's certain stats <laughs> in college that translate better for predictability and fantasy at the running back position surprisingly the most sticky stat from college to fantasy production in the NFL is rushing touchdowns for running backs and Devin Singletary had 32 in one season and 22 in his final season uh, I mean you you saw him used around the goal line in preseason and then you know I think he's got the opportunity do I think he comes out and is a three down back week one no in fact, on the season, I've got Frank Gore with 150 carries. So I don't have this statted out like Devin Singletary is going to be everything there. But this is a team that wants to run the ball. This is a team that can run the ball, especially with their quarterback. And so I, I believe... What about T.J. Yeldon, though? Because you know that he'll be involved in the offense as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I've got T.J. Yeldon Stealing down for 45 receptions. carries. Yes, he will. He's going to steal receptions away from both of those players. We're so I have right now uh, Devin Singletary for 205 carries and 45 targets, 35 receptions. So, so you, I have don't, at, I don't, you have him at 205 carries. Correct. What running back? I got him at 155 carries. Right. <laughs> that's where I've that's where I've got Frank Gore. Where do you have Frank Gore? 137. So you just have the team having fewer rushing attempts. Then. I have the team. Uh, yeah, I mean Josh Allen takes away from that too. I mean if the team is a rushing team. Will have great statistics. They will run with a great frequency, but it will be displaced across Allen, Singletary, Gore, and Yeldon. I still look at Singletary as a second-half player if I see an emergence, but this is why we're bringing it up. I mean, you guys are hearing us break this down. Uh, we've done it mentally, but now we're, you know. Where did he come? Where did Singletary come in for you in your season-long running back Running rankings? back 25. Okay. He came in at 30 for me when I put so, his initial numbers in. 
Yeah, and and to your point, Jason, last year they had 468 rushing attempts. I have them projected for 454, so 14 fewer. Gotcha. So that's pretty similar. Um, I don't think I would – like if you're playing week one, let me ask you this, Mike. You have to choose between Frank Gore and Devin Singletary week one. Who do you Frank play? Frank Gore. Jason? I would play Devin Singletary. Yeah, okay. I, I, uh, I would prefer week one. Foot Clan that's listening to play neither. Uh, Peyton the, Barber. The Jets have a really good defensive line. That's their week one matchup. So Peyton uh, Barber or Frank Gore or Devin Singletary. Week one. Oh, 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 oh. dirty oh, deeds. Oh, oh man. <laughs> you want to feel gross week Thunder one? Dirt cheap. Who do you oh. play? You feel confident <laughs> enough in your Singletary, uh, your 203 pound Devin Singletary to put him out there. Week one well, the, over Peyton Barber. Man, San Francisco, which is Tampa Bay's week one opponent, has had a lot of injuries. Man, I think I would go Peyton Barber slightly over Devin Singletary for week one. I don't, All right. I don't feel clean. <laughs> I feel like I need a shower right now. <laughs> All right, LaShawn McCoy, no worse for wear. In fact, much better. He ends up on the best offense in football, signed to a one-year $4 million contract with $3 million guaranteed, the Kansas City Chiefs, Andy Reid, bring in an old friend, Shady McCoy, to join a backfield with Damian Williams and Darwin Thompson. ruh -ro. There is – let's talk about the impact to Damian Williams. Sure. To start. Because some of the doubts around Damian Williams had to do with how much the team is forced into their loyalty. Uh, money, tenure, all of those things. That, that's that been the concern around Damian Williams for me. Not necessarily that, like I told you last week, Mike, and I'm not, this is not a victory lap for Damian Williams. We didn't know Shady McCoy was going to go there. But he was a bust before this signing for me on the bus show. And the reason why was simply because of the range of outcomes for Damian Williams. They could fall in love with Darwin Thompson they could bring in another back. At the time, it was Carlos Hyde. And we've seen Damian never receive more than 50 carries in a season. I think what we're seeing now is the you know early offseason. Damian's our guy. Damian's our guy. Damian's our guy. Opportunity comes to bring in LaShawn McCoy. And here we are. How do you see this breaking down? McCoy gets, you know, it's a one-year deal for a veteran. The money doesn't really concern me at all. Nor, does, nor do I. Nor, do, ever, I. nor, nor do, I. do I share concerns <laughs> with Buddy. Mike wanted to agree with me there and yes. didn't know how. Yes, we got there. But uh, at this point, when you think about McCoy coming into a situation, he was really bad last year. LaShawn McCoy was like 3.4, 3.2 a carry. You throw that out, he was PFF ranked 41st on two of their major rushing metrics. He was a bad running back last season. Mm -hmm. That's just, just like Damian Williams was his whole career. Correct. Prior to the Chiefs. Correct. But if you say, hey, LaShawn McCoy, I want a chance to resurrect your career. Let's go to a situation where Damian Williams was really good. Let's go to a situation where you're with a former head coach who views you maybe in a light that the other play, other coaches in the league doesn't view you. If he went to a random, you know, the Chargers were rumored as a destination for McCoy. Same offer is what I heard. He got offered money to go to the Chargers because they're done with Melvin Gordon. That's a whole other story. But if he goes to Los Angeles, they, they don't know him. They're going to let him, you know, what he did and does on the field may matter more in Los Angeles than what he's done before matters in Kansas City. Right, 100%. I mean, the, the fact that you're coming in to a team where the head coach knows you, trusts you. Because remember, look, if you, if you think back to last year, Kareem Hunt goes away. Do you remember Damian Williams stepped up was great? Because I don't remember that. What I remember is Spencer Ware stepped up. And then it was once Spencer Ware went down that Damian Williams got his shot. And so, yeah, coming into this season, you've got 1A and 1B. You've got two starters. Now, I have, we were arguing on Slack immediately following the news, our, our initial reactions. I truly believed Shady was going to be the guy. Not, 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 the, not like he was taking over and d -Will was going away, but he would get – uh, first snaps, he would be, you know, great after week one or two. Um, and when I statted him out, I still had Damian Williams being the more valuable back because I do think 
while I've got Shady down for as many carries as D will on the season, D will's usage in the passing game is fantastic, especially for the Chiefs. And the amount of fantasy points that will flow from this position are great. But I've got them very close to each other. D will slightly ahead, but this t- I mean he tumbles now because you take so much opportunity away from Damian Williams. You know, we always say talent and opportunity. The opportunity was unbelievable. Talent, no, not so much. But now the opportunity gets cut in, you know, what? His his ceiling is, aside from an injury, to me, the, da- the Damian Williams ceiling, which is where I think he was being drafted for the majority of the offseason, is gone to me. The volatility is the problem now, not production. I've been saying that since this move happened. I'm worried about the volatility. Somebody will be great very frequently on the Chiefs in the Chiefs running game. But I don't think this throws Dami, De, uh, Darwin Thompson. Now, for fantasy purposes, Darwin's probably not a player you want to mess with. But for NFL purposes, I think he'll still be utilized. So now you're talking about a three-headed situation, and I'm worried about the volatility. Is there going to be a backfield that you're more interested in watching run out onto the field in week <laughs> one? No. As they take the field and everyone's scanning for numbers. No. Is 25 out there? My, Mike and I are still really, really excited to see Mike Davis get the first carry. Oh, that, that's <laughs> a whole different story. Thursday night football. Just, oh, just you're so talking the, yeah. about the Chicago Bears. Yes. Yeah, just you, so the whole world could... could yes, well, you which, said, is there any backfield you're more excited to watch? Yeah, I just want to watch Because the that's going to happen. Mike Davis will get the first snap. And, you really believe that? And Twitter... I don't think Mike Davis will be the primary guy. I just think this, that's one of those veteran weird things that can happen. And Twitter is going to lose its mind. Okay, back to Kansas City. I still believe that Damian Williams is the primary running back. Like everything, Jason. That's why I thought you, your your take on Shady McCoy's value in Buffalo was interesting. Like there, to me, there is a large difference if you think a player is not as talented as other players, as a running back who you think is washed. That's a very big difference. Shady McCoy is he's a Hall of Fame running back to me. But part of that is longevity. And he that guy has seen so many touches that he, I mean he is way past the running back cliff. And you kind of saw it really catch him the past two years. The past two years I've got those numbers if you want them. Yeah, please. LaShawn McCoy, two thousand three hundred and forty six career carries. Damian Williams one hundred and eighty three. <laughs> yes. Well someone has tread left and it was up until 2017. 13 two, times as many carries as Damian Williams. So 2017, two years ago, that was the lowest yards per carry of McCoy's career at just four until last year when it dropped down to 3.2. I still have Damian Williams as the primary guy. There was, there, There's a quote from Andy Reid who th- this one isn't circulating as much, which is interesting. The one that went – viral and went fire was was them talking about okay we have two starters but instead this is a quote from reed he knows what to expect i've been uh speaking of mccoy i've been very honest with him about damien and how good of a football player he is it doesn't matter if we think damien williams is a bad football player if jason thinks that damien williams is a bad football player lashawn or andy reed thinks he's a good football player this is this is the needle in the haystack a running back who he had a huge amount of production with years ago. And this is – you're going back to 2012. Talk about getting back together with your ex and things could be really, really bad. Uh, so I'm, I'm still drafting Damian Williams if I'm drafting right now. I'm not taking him in the second round. you got to buy that dip. He if Once he hits around the fourth or the fifth round, then I'm still interested. Damian Williams will be the primary pass-catching running back – and there's lots and lots of touchdowns to go around for well, Kansas City. And that's where the volatility argument comes to head to me. <clears throat> Kansas City does not run the ball a lot. People need to understand that. They run it well. They don't run it a lot. Last right. year, 387 carries. Baltimore, Seattle, they're in the 530s, 540s. They're in the, Kansas City's in the bottom third in rushing attempts. If you split that up, mm-hmm. you could have great weeks if you roll the dice correctly. You could have absolute bottom-of-the-barrel problems if Damian Williams goes out and he gets eight carries and he doesn't score. Those are the games I'm afraid of. Yeah, and it, it certainly could happen. It just would go – it would be removed from what Andy Reid has done his entire 
career. Now, don't this, you don't you think it's interesting that Reed would come out though and pronounce the committee weeks ago and then bring in McCoy? No, doesn't that matter to you? It does. The, the what he was saying about the committee doesn't matter to me because the committee was with Carlos Hyde, which every beat reporter was saying this guy's not going to make the team, which is undercutting everything Andy Reid is saying. It the, to me when that happened, that was. This guy that I have put my entire support behind to be our starter is hurt, and he's not out there, and I'm super frustrated with it. We all have That's Damian, how I read, read into it. We all have Damian Williams statted for more fantasy points than Sean McCoy, but I would take the cheaper one in drafts. Sure. I mean, right now, that's that was the question I was going to bring up, is where are you drafting Damian Williams uh, yeah, at this point? Fourth, fifth round. I'd still take him there. Okay. I think that's fair. Yeah. I think that's fair. Um Man, before we move on to more news, and there's still more <laughs> news. This is, we haven't even tip of the iceberg here. Look, fantasy football is back. We are all excited, and that means that FanDuel is also back, and they have more ways to win cash prizes and once-in-a-lifetime experiences during every game, every week. If you've never played on FanDuel, fantastic, because new users can get a $5 bonus with their first deposit. FanDuel is the perfect complement the perfect compliment to your season long. You look, you want Damian Williams. You didn't, you didn't get him. And now you're interested in what's happening with his price. Or maybe you're want, trying to buy in on Devin Singletary, who he could see a bump, but he's got that cheaper salary week one. You can do that over on FanDuel. You get to pick a new team every week. And with the FanDuel app, you can play anytime, anywhere, no matter how you like to play. There is a contest for you. Get in on the action anywhere you want. Sign up for FanDuel now and get a $5 bonus with your first deposit of at least $5. Go to FanDuel.com slash footballers or download the FanDuel app and see why they why FanDuel is way more than just fantasy sports. That's FanDuel.com slash footballers. And we want to thank Lightstream for supporting the podcast who believes that people with good credit deserve a better loan experience. Refinancing your credit card can lower your interest rate and save you money. And you don't have to be a financial expert to do it right now. You can get a credit card cons uh, consolidation loan mm. from my friends at Lightstream with a rate as low as 5.95% APR with AutoPay. That's way lower than the average credit card interest rate of over 19% APR. That means you could save thousands of dollars in interest. You can get a loan from $5,000 to $100,000. There's no fees, there's no application, no origination, no transaction freeze, no prepayment penalties, and the only way to get this discount is to go to lightstream.com slash footballers. It's subject to credit approval. Rate includes a 0.5% auto pay discount. Terms and conditions apply, and offers are subject to change without notice. Visit lightstream.com slash footballers for more information. That's L-I-G-H-T-S-T-R-E-A-M dot com slash footballers. All right, the Texans acquired running back Carlos Hyde from the Chiefs in exchange for offensive guard uh, Martinez Rankin. Carlos Hyde joins yet another franchise. You should – It was like his fourth team in it. I think it's five teams in two years. <laughs> Smith Schuster just – Oh, oh, oh Juju goes down. Oh, uh -oh. Juju goes down. We just – if you heard a sound on the podcast, uh -oh. um, we just lost uh, a, a large <laughs> – Frame jersey off the back wall. Now, fortunately, it did not hit Batman's head. Nothing could take Batman down. No, Batman's safe. However, Juju is not. And, we got to go um, to the YouTube to see. Ladies and gentlemen, that is not a foreshadowing of things to come. Well, I will say this. Week <clears> one <throat> is not looking. I, I think I think Bill Belichick is going to take Juju out week one. But uh, he's preparing it, yourself for the long haul now, with Juju. Is it a coincidence that Juju's jersey was hanging behind the Fantasy Reaper I don't when know. <laughs> it came down? Hmm? I, think, I don't know. I, Brooks, just let it be. Let it be. You're good. Yeah, I don't know. If, I thought Brooks was going to come over here and we just leave him down there, okay? Uh, back to Carlos Hyde. Hooray. I, I didn't care about him when he was on the best rushing situation or one of the better offenses in football in Kansas City. I don't care about him now. I didn't care about him in Jacksonville. I didn't care about him in Cleveland. Carlos Hyde does nothing for fantasy owners. So that that would be – do you guys disagree with that in any – do you have any interest in Carlos Hyde? I, I don't think – I know he affects other players, but I'm saying him specifically, yes. that's the question out there. No, I'm not drafting Carlos Hyde. And I was going to say he, he does nothing for me. He does things to me. 
because yeah. we all expected the Texans, they had to make a move for Duke Johnson. They can't say, okay, Duke, you're going to touch the ball 300 times. That's just not who Duke Johnson is at this point. So bringing in Carlos Hyde. That's best case scenario. It is best case scenario. We, you were happy when the Chiefs signed him. Yes. Because it represented something for Damian Williams. Yes. So it it's certainly – he's the backup. He is the backup to Duke Johnson. He's going to get on the field. He's going to get touches. Will he get goal line over Duke Johnson? That's the big question because Carlos Hyde is still a big bruising guy. Now, when you say that he's the backup, do you mean that you believe Duke Johnson will have more rushing attempts than Carlos Hyde? I do. Do you, Andy, as well? I lean that way. I find myself on the opposite sides of most really? of the arguments. Okay. I mean, I, I, I completely agree. I don't want Carlos Hyde. I don't want to touch him with a 10-foot pole. He's not as good as Lamar Miller, who, you know, had the whole role to himself. And, you know, we've talked about this. The utilization of the Texans and Deshaun Watson so far has been near the goal line. It's a lot of pass plays. It's not a lot of rushing work for the running back. And they don't pass to the running back over the last several years historically. Now, they haven't had a Duke Johnson, yeah, so they I expect that they to will go now. up. They yeah. will. They no, will I, do that. I expect that to go up because now they have a good pass catching back. But now you're splitting the situation where, you know, Lamar Miller last season had 210 carries. Neither one of these backs is going to approach that number, uh, in, in my opinion. I think that Carlos Hyde and Duke Johnson will both be sharing those carries. And while the total pass catching work will go up, it, it has to go up for it to just be near the bottom of the league. I mean, they've been pretty much dead last over the last five years. So I don't want Carlos Hyde, and this is a good situation for Duke Johnson as far as who's going to come in to replace him, but I still don't think – I think with a big bruising back like Carlos Hyde, I just can't imagine them giving the majority of rushing attempts to Duke Johnson. Well, let's, let's say this. If Bill O'Brien was so lucky, so fortunate, to have Alfred Blue in his own backfield, a healthy <laughs> Alfred Blue, Bill O'Brien would give him carries. Yes. And he would give them with no regard to their productivity. So if Carlos Hyde could have handpicked a situation where he could say, hey, I can go and be not productive somewhere on the reg. And keep getting the ball. And keep getting the ball. It would have to be Houston. And I do think that they – I think they'll be similar in terms of total carries. Duke will be far more productive. And they picked up Laramie Tunzel. This was a big piece yeah, of big, the puzzle here. Big time. I mean, they acquired arguably a, you know, a top, the top or a top five one of left the, tackle in football. One of the top, especially one of the top young left tackles in the league. Yeah, That's, and they, they signed, uh, they acquired Tunzel, uh, Kenny Stills, and a fourth round pick, and they gave up uh, everything else that they have. Yeah, the offense gets better, which means maybe, maybe goal line opportunities do go up if they're able to move the ball you know, you, you take a couple sacks away from there Deshaun Watson. There will be Watson. no goal line, man. It's, I, it's all Deshaun Watson. Dude, I love Deshaun 40 Watson. 40-yard touchdowns. Look, I, it, it, uh, great friend of the show, J.J. Zacharyson, he had a hilarious tweet to me. He said, the NFL is out here playing chess, and the Texans are playing Madden. And I was like, yeah, that's perfect. They, The Texans, they, they peeked over the yard, and they saw what the Chiefs were doing when the Chiefs just have everyone who's faster than everybody else. And now they're like, Fuller and Stills on the same field with Hop look with Hopkins, who's still fast in his own right. He's not as fast as Fuller and Kenny Stills, but when you have two lightning speed guys who are also a little bit bigger, with Hopkins, good luck, good luck stopping that passing attack. Yeah, I think part of stopping the passing attack is going to be whether or not they have a running game with the aforementioned Duke Johnson. Won't need it and Carlos Hyde. I'm I'm not willing to chase these acquisitions all the way to Deshaun no. Watson being my number one, but he's uh -oh. got he's just set up. I mean, I think Mahomes is still I, I still firmly have him there, but Watson's going to be a blast. He's going to be a blast to own for fantasy owners. Yes, he will. Yeah, he's I'm gonna really, have some Mondo weeks. I'm really jealous of people because I, I have him nowhere. He was still, you know, one of the higher drafted quarterbacks and, and I'm not drafting a quarterback in those early rounds. But I'm jealous. I'm jealous of the people that get to play Deshaun Watson this year. Yeah, it's going to be fun. All right. Are we good uh, moving on? Kenny Stills, only, some uh, people want to know relevance. Uh, I, I don't think he has fantasy relevance for himself. It's just it's a it's a huge upgrade 
for Deshaun Watson. Yeah, Probably I, similar to like, you know, when you give deep threats to Drew Brees over the years, those guys you yeah. didn't generally play, but yeah. man, they helped Drew Brees. Yeah, exactly right. Uh, the only thing I want to say before we move on from the Texans is as you brought up Alfred Blue, I went back and looked at his game logs last year and they're delightful. Can I interest you in 20 carries? For 40 yards? <laughs> <laughs> yes, give the guy the ball more. <laughs> he had 40 yards. And well, you 40, kept... uh, uh, okay, 46 yards. I cut six of them off. You know, oh. you know for a, even still, you know for a fact. They, he kept getting the ball. 20 carries. I don't think Bill O'Brien cares that much about productivity. Obviously, the evidence shows that. It's more, do you set up the play-action pass? Do you set up what the offense is trying to do? There is no doubt Alfred Blue. High five Bill O'Brien on the way into the locker room after his 20 for 40 performance. That's mm -hmm. what I believe. All right. Let's talk about Melvin Gordon. Let's talk about Ezekiel Elliott. The great holdouts. They continue. The Chargers, they're done. They're done negotiating. They're done talking. They're not even, maybe they never began. And so Gordon is either going to put his tail between his legs and roll up at some point during the season. He has to do it before week 10. Or his contract doesn't toll. And if I'm Melvin Gordon, I show up because I need to get out of here. If I'm not going to get my money, I need to get out. And the only way I get out of town is if I show up for half the season and move on. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those situations where they're not going to renegotiate until after the season. They've given him permission to seek a trade. So he either gets that trade with a team who – clearly has to pay him. He, yeah, I, I don't right. think he's going to find a trade. No, I mean, what what team at this point in the season is going to pay what he is asking for? And give up pieces. I mean, I this is one of those really, Not really happening. weird situations where I know that there's all the rules of if he doesn't sign by this time or do this thing, you know, uh, the season doesn't accrue, he'd be on his fifth-year option next year, right. blah, 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 blah. I still believe there's a chance he misses the whole season. I, I, I think that... You, you can't just apply uh, really simplistic binary logic to these situations. Look, Lev Bell, lot, other than a, a season-ending injury, he lost a ton of money by holding out last year. Yes, he got paid up, but overall he was going to get paid either way. He lost, I think, uh, approximately like $14 million. Well, he it's just really hard, though, because Gordon can't do anything. I mean, they could seek to trade him. Like, if he held out through the year, he's losing the game checks, and – the, you know, is he going to trade all the game checks up to week 10? And then he doesn't have any free agency. He has no no ability to be released. I just don't know what happens. Do they trade him in the offseason? That's one of the outcomes that he doesn't play through the whole year. He gives up all that money. Then they trade him. Then he has to find a paycheck. I tend to believe he's back by week 10, which so means I'm basically not even touching him in drafts because there is a percentage chance Jason is dead on right or i guess you're not even you're not predicting that he will miss the whole year you're just saying he could that's in the range of outcomes. and i do believe that as well therefore gordon is basically a dart throw at the back half of drafts if you want to be the guy with his pants off running around the room saying i did it i did it i stole <laughs> melvin gordon you know week six seven eight whenever he shows melvin back up. gordon stole you yeah he did and the thing is is this team is 100 percent planning to be without him they're content with Eckler Jackson and what was going to be Shady McCoy or some other option. So Melvin Gordon is is in a bad in a bad spot. Yes, because he he's does. also not made a lot of money in his career. So you're giving up a lot, not rolling up. So and then Ezekiel Elliott, get this, he's uh, things are trending the right way, <laughs> things are trending the wrong way. He's in Cabo, he's in America, he's uh, things are looking real good, things are looking real bad. So. Where are we with Zeke? Because now the latest, the the latest. Oh, oh we have more. Do we oh, have, oh, oh. Do, 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 do you want me to hit the button? Yeah. yeah. Breaking news. According to Pro Football Talk. Okay. This. Oh my gosh. Okay. Let, let me have it. Reports are the Cowboys are close to signing Ezekiel Elliott to a six-year. $90 million extension. Woo! By the time you listen to this, this could be done based on this report. Because he is back in the country. And, uh... Oh, man. Here, Melvin, I think we almost need... How crappy does Melvin Gordon feel if this goes through? Like, he's, he's thinking, oh, this is a victory. Zeke has reset the market. No. Zeke had two years left. 
and his team said, "Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna open up the vault," and the Chargers said, "Nah, bro." No, Mel Melvin Gordon. I totally get what you're saying, but he'll be he'll be thrilled about this because he thinks this just raises the baseline In of what the running wrong backs. Way. Yes, he's he's probably wrong to do so. This is what we've been saying for the this entire off season. We've been so much more scared of Melvin Gordon than Zeke. Now this not to maybe the maybe the deal is done by the time you listen to this podcast. Maybe it's not. And maybe they go backwards and he's not there for week <laughs> 1 or maybe week 2. But there's communication. They both right. want the deal to get done. They're just squabbling over all of the details. Zeke is playing the vast majority of this season. I don't think that is really something that is scary at this point is losing him for not based on recent News and I, I would tend to believe. I mean, it looks like this thing is likely to get done. It matches him flying back into the country. Now they also signed Lyle Collins to a five-year contract extension, locking up their tackle. So if this deal goes through, because we need to, we need to talk like that. What do you do if you're a Tony Pollard owner and you don't have Zeke? Because if you have Zeke, maybe you hold on to Tony Pollard. Maybe you don't. I mean, if if you're he signs this deal. Then Tony Pollard is a is a useless or not useless. He is a, <laughs> completely a handcuff, which a handcuff that I would not have drafted. Exactly. That's why I'm, that's why the word useless came out. Was the only reason I'm interested in drafting Tony Pollard because Jerry Jones was that he was preparing at least posture wise, preparing to be without Zeke, maybe up to six games, and Tony Pollard was going to smash if that was going going to be the case. But if Zeke inks this right now. Then Tony Pollard is. I'm. I'm going to reach out to the Zeke owner. Mm -hmm. I'm going to see if maybe like you sure you try sure to get don't? something for that sixth, seventh round pick you spent on yeah. Pollard. You sure you don't want some of this insurance? You remind them that what happens when a player stays out of camp, comes in late. Sometimes right. they pull a oh. hammy week one. You you go spin doctors. Yeah, and I, I'm very thankful that we waited a little while to talk about Zeke on this show because this looks like it's happening. So, um, D Jay. Zeke inked. Zeke is inked. Does he shoot right back he to is, your number one guy? He is my number one running back on the season. If he is inked, that is such good news for me because I have him in a lot of best ball. I feel week like every one, roster I've got him. It, it, week one is you get the same workload yep. coming back? Yeah. Interesting. He's Cabo fit, man. You, oh, you know, I wish I was Cabo fit. I mean, the thing, <laughs> me too. I mean, the thing is, is if, if you do ink something like this. Is his head getting bigger, by the way? Yeah, it like is Zeke's head? Uh, is it one of those like? Is this a permanent like situation where it just know. keeps gotta, getting bigger every year? We'll just have to refer to Mike for those answers. He's the only one that can understand. Oh, <laughs> and the the answer does your head keep getting larger? It the answer is apparently. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Well, yeah. I mean this this is uh, I feel your pain, Zeke. For what it's worth, that big heads unite. That average would have him tie Todd Gurley as the highest paid back in the league. But a lot of years. A lot of years. I know that they didn't want to front load the deal. They they need flexibility. They've got my goodness. You sign your tackle. You sign Zeke. Now you got to deal with Dak. Then you got to deal with Cooper. Oh man, do, how much money do you got, Jerry? Extended Jalen Smith last week. Yeah, they did. Oh goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Oh boy. Um, Gonna <clears throat> pay out the nose for uh, what's that college coach <laughs> Lincoln Riley? No. going to pay out the nose for him next year. Yeah, you might. And I don't know if you pay. I mean, Amari Cooper probably has a bit of a Melvin Gordon problem going on. Yes, he does. And that is thinking that you're more valuable than you are. And it's not to say Cooper's not a good receiver or Gordon's a good running back. But I don't think you have the right appropriation of your importance to the team. And you can, if Michael Gallup takes a step up and you can go draft the wideout, I don't know why you pay Cooper. I really don't know why you would. If you're Dallas with all this money going around, no flexibility, you want your defense to be good. Well, you get to see this year whether or not – I mean, if he if he steps up and dominates and is a clear-cut wide receiver one in the league, then then you pay him. But if he doesn't and he's just one of your wide receivers that maybe gets the most targets, then, yeah, you don't, you don't pay the level he's looking for. Or deals with plantar fasciitis all year long. Yeah. All right. Hey, guess what? Jacoby Brissett got paid. Two-year, $30 million contract, $20 million guaranteed. They're certainly uh, – committed to Jacoby Brissett as the starter super smart move because uh, otherwise, I like it otherwise I mean you he, he's not the future there but he's their starter all season he could be their future he could be but the point is like I don't think that this team I mean it was a two-year deal it, it keeps them from having to franchise him next year if 
they clearly don't have the known future in yes. place. He's 26 years old. Then they went out and perfectly signed, perfectly signed, Brian Hoyer to a three-year deal. You should see the signature. Right in the box. It's, nothing outside the lines. Yeah, perfect signature. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Three-year, $12 million deal. Uh, I say perfect because this is the exact kind of signing you need behind Jacoby Brissett and with Chad Kelly. Hoyer will be the backup to uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. To Jacoby Brissett. Congratulations and to the Jacoby. Colts. And Hoyer. I, I know I've mentioned it before. I can see the future. The Colts will be better than you think. I don't think they're going to be a bad team. Their defense is great. Their offensive line is good, and their head coach is outstanding. But they're not going to be the Super Bowl contending Colts that I so desperately wanted to see this year. You are correct. Um, injury updates. Amari Cooper returned to practice uh, after missing nearly a month. Uh, he will play week one. Jets. Robbie Anderson trending towards playing in week one. Dude. I'm trending towards being uncomfortable playing in week yeah. one. It's that's in fact rough, he's man. not in one of my lineups as of today. I'm willing to move him in if things trend the right direction this week. We'll keep it's, you. It's already a updated. Really rough matchup. Ugh, uh, it sucks. I want to talk briefly uh, about some hype. Darius Geis hype. Jay Gruden said, and this is a rare thing. And I think it's a rare thing when you pay a guy like Adrian Peterson who was productive, and Darius Geis coming off the injury. Gruden came out and said. He's going to get more carries than Adrian Peterson this year. He said the offense carry, carries-wise will go through him. Now, that's I don't think the offense carries-wise is going to be great. That's but fair. This that's as good as you could possibly ever This is as good as you could for. get for a guy who had a very tumultuous, uncomfortable offseason. In fantasy, most coaches, there's, there's, there's fluff. There's most of the time they're just not answering there's, anything. There's guff. They, they say things like, uh, you know, oh, the old fluff and guff. They're all good, but th to say that the offense carry wise is going to run through this player, yeah. I mean, you, you, you have to. That matters, and the time of year that it's being said also matters. They, they feel like he's healthy. I have been up to this point saying that I would rather have AP over Geis. Based on the head coach coming out and saying something like this, you you can't you have to stay water. You have to say, okay, Geis is clearly going to be the one with the more carries on the season. Now the question then becomes, how valuable are those carries, and can he stay healthy? Exactly. The Redskins' offensive line is whoa, watch so, out at left guard. They'll be starting Eric Flowers. If you've played fantasy football for any amount of time. That name should terrify you <laughs> or excite you if you're on the uh, defensive side. Yes. Oh, man. Hold on. It gets worse. Hold on. At left tackle, they will be starting Donald Penn, who they just scooped up off of the streets. Oh, he's so washed. <laughs> he's yeah. so washed. So, so the, the pass uh, rush. So Case Keenum, quote, won the starting job. Oh, he lost in a lot of ways, didn't he? <laughs> he, yes. Yes. Wow. Uh, but it, while we're talking about hype, I had tweeted about it over the weekend when they cut Josh Doxson. I don't normally love rookie wide receivers, but Terry McLaurin is in a really good situation. It's a great situation. I have him stashed in a couple weeks just to see what happens week one. Let's let's just see what happens. And uh, on top of that, if you're just talking long term, he was the go to wide receiver. From the, for Dwayne Haskins. For Dwayne Haskins. Yeah. It's like that connection's already there. Who will built be in. forced to be the starting quarterback <laughs> Probably second very half, second half of week one, <laughs> the way that the offensive line looks in Washington. Uh, Jarek McKinnon placed on injured reserve. Jeff Wilson released. The name is Jeff. The situation at the running back position in San Francisco it's pretty is, clear. is really clear. It's going to be Tevin Coleman and Matt Breida, and it's going to be pretty good. And uh, hopefully you have them. Hopefully you got both those players at a value because there was no way you couldn't. That was you want a gift from fantasy football over the off season. If you drafted Tevin Coleman or you drafted Matt Breida, you got them cheaper than they than what their real value is. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Jordan Reed is still in the concussion protocol, which is not surprising at all when you've had multiple concussions. You're 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 in the protocol longer. Let's say he's cleared right now. He's back. I would He's starting him. week one. You would play yes, him would over, play. over say, uh, Darren Waller. I would not. I would not touch Jordan Reed. I've got enough guys I'd rather just roll out there week one. That's where I am, too. That's why I was curious, Mike, where you were. Because I wouldn't see. I don't mind rostering him, but then you're rostering, too. You're saying, like, if I'm playing Jordan Reed, that means I'm in the 
I'm in the bowels with with guys like Darren Waller. And <laughs> Get company. out the bowels. Yeah, you don't want to be there. But Jordan, look, Jordan Reed, if he's out there, he will be a focal point of the offense. I guess my point is, let's say you have those two guys. You've got Jordan Reed or Darren Waller, and they both could have a great week one. Sure. If they do, I'm terrified to have Jordan Reed, and I oh, assume yeah. it can't keep up because one, point. one more hard hit literally anywhere. It doesn't have to be concussion. Head, Head and shoulders, yeah. knees, knees and toes. Yeah, yeah. Knees and toes. Uh, what toes? But um, yeah, I don't need toes. <laughs> so that's where I think I would pivot yeah, I think I'm just to out. someone like Waller, where if it if he pops, I trust that I've got something for the season. Uh, you might need Reed over Trey Burton. He's day to day. Thursday night game. It's uh, not looking great for Trey Burton getting out there. Even if Burton's cleared to play, I'm not going to play him. Nikhil Harry on IR, non-season ending IR for Nikhil Harry. Uh, first round rookie Demarius Thomas got re-signed by the Patriots right now Josh Gordon is expected to play a full allotment of slap, uh, slaps of slaps mm. not snaps mm. slaps that's what that's what they call him because whenever there's press coverage you just he slaps, slaps him out of the way yeah. I was speaking once again very accurately about Josh Gordon on this show uh, but you you feel good starting him up week one seeing what you got with Josh Gordon yes I yeah. am fine throwing him out there right up, right off the bat week one <laughs> all right Slap him into your lineup. That's what I do. Uh, Alfred Blue, Jags running back on IR. So if there's ever been a Jag running back, hey it's Alfred Blue. Oh He's my gosh. just a guy. Well, uh, Fournette looks great from a guaranteed workload standpoint. Jason's seal clapping. I'm so happy sure. because Speaking I, of I was seal. forced into him in two of our three main leagues, and I've got Fournette, which I I wasn't super thrilled about, but lately I'm. Um, getting happier and happier. With, now, Alf long with Alfred Blue gone, Reichwell Armstead yes. is he is the primary backup. If I believe if something happens to Fournette, Reichwell will slide right in and he'll have. I think I'll have, he'll, he'll have he'll good get production. work week one. He'll get work sure, but not work that you care about. Uh, Jason, I think this is important because you will never probably get to do it again. But Ricky Seals Jones. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> okay, I was wondering which direction you were going to go. I thought maybe a slow death. You went the choking choking yes. to death method. It was a quick cut. He was cut from the uh, Arizona Cardinals claimed by the Browns. Ricky Seals-Jones days of fantasy relevance. Are. Yeah, look, <clears throat> if, if, if a guy who already has positive feelings for you and Cliff Kingsbury, there are, he's already connected to Ricky Seals-Jones. If he said, no, you can't play for my team. Does Wasn't it say he, anything about Charles Clay? I mean, Clay is going to have a significant role in the offense. I think he, it says a lot about the Arizona Cardinals offense as a whole. You saw them using a lot of tight ends in preseason, and some of the writers that follow the Cardinals very closely were talking about this is all just – this is not what you're seeing in practice. They don't use tight ends that much. This is going to be a four-wide receiver set on the, on the reg, and Clay will – Certainly be the main tight end, could be, without a could doubt. Be, could be Max Williams. Wendell Smallwood, Donnell Pomfrey, Josh Adams, and Boston Scott. Cut, 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 cut. Clearing, clearing house when you spend a second-round pick on a rookie running back. Still have Jordan Howard, uh, Miles Sanders, Darren Sproles, and Corey Clement. Good for you, Corey Clement. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> just holding on. Just being able to make that team this year, I didn't think you'd do it. We got all of our week one rankings will be on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com today. If you are a member of jointhefoot.com, you get access to flex rankings. You get ask, access to the actually week, the actual full stat projections for the week. Because of the matchup, now I don't know how it'll all shake out for, for all of my teams, but because of the matchup, would you consider playing Jordan Howard and Miles Sanders together Ooh. at home against Washington this week knowing that both will see a significant amount of work and both have touchdown potential against Washington, is that a stack you would consider? It's a rarity, but the matchup and the, the productivity seems interesting. Because of where they were drafted, I doubt that anybody in the world would need to start those two guys. They probably have starters ahead of them, but I do believe both guys are startable. So if you're in a deep league and, well, like, and that happens to be your situation, uh, that's fine. You Can I put a hypothetical to you? Please do. Kalen Balazs plays Baltimore week one. Okay. Do you play Kalen Balazs or do you play Jordan Howard? Jordan Howard. Okay. Devin Singletary plays the Jets on the road week one. Miles Sanders. <laughs> so you're going to 
So then, I mean, if, would you play if those, those two? Were your four, yeah. Then I would play those two. So that that's the situation that uh, wow. a, a friend of mine, a distant friend of mine. Uh-huh. Oh, <laughs> did you didn't know what I he was doing? I did not realize what was happening. This is real life. Wow. See, we're playing games this week, Jay. Oh my! Goodness. So I needed to figure you out. You just what set a- his lineup against you. You <laughs> bad <laughs> dummy. Ridiculous. <laughs> All right, I think we're going to wrap things up today. News and notes is always brought to you by the Sleeper app. Don't miss a piece of infa- impactful fantasy news this year. Download the free Sleeper app today. Now, before we close it down, we are breaking out a brand new segment. Yeah. Now, each and every week, we're we're looking towards uh, Tuesdays is all about waivers, man. It's normally the waiver show, so each and every Tuesday, we bring you the waiver picks. But this is appropriate for this week. You're getting ready. A lot of you didn't even draft defenses because you're waiting to the last minute. Good for you, by the way. It's very smart because if you had Devin Singletary instead of a defense, yeah. you're sitting pretty. Uh, but we've got a new Tuesday segment. Defense versus offense. Presented by Head & Shoulders and Walmart. All right. Let's pick some streaming defenses for week one. We like to look at low ownership defensive opportunities going up against struggling offenses or offenses we don't think are going to be great. So you don't have to, you know, if you went out and drafted Jacksonville, you get to play them against Kansas City week one. Congratulations. (laughs) But I'm bringing the Seattle Seahawks defense to the forefront. They are 13% owned right now. I don't get it. I don't know why. Uh, They have an at-home matchup against Andy Dalton. They get to break out their new weapon. And, I mean, they've already got Wagner running around, doing Wagner things. And now you get to break out Jadavian Clowney. You know, this is a team last year that I think the reason this they're, they're not getting any love Middle of the pack last year as a defense in yards given up per game. They were 11th in points given up per game. They were 11th in takeaways. Those are both top half. This is going to be, and when you play at home, when you play with the 12th man, Seattle shows up. So for me, my streaming defense pick in week one is Seattle against Andy Dalton without A.J. Green. It could be rough with uh, with that Seattle defense going at him. My streaming pick is also the Seattle Seahawks defense (laughs) because (laughs) that's the one that I want to go with. Andy Dalton is going to get sacked. Andy Dalton is going to turn the ball over against that defense. And that's a promise. It's just going to happen. But because Andy was first to the dock to put Seattle in, I want to throw out the Dallas Cowboys who they are still available. I know they they were drafted far more than, than the Seahawks and certainly more than the defense that Jason's going to throw out. But they're ava- they are available in, in some of these leagues, and they're opening schedule. The Giants, Washington, Miami. So uh, this Manning, whole, this, Keenum, Fitz? Rosen? Rosen? Fit, Fitz? So this segment is all about streaming a defense. You might not have to stream a defense if you grabbed the Dallas Cowboys, who, in their own right, they're a strong defense. And then they get three-plus matchups. That's what I like. To start the season out. Well, so now I get to talk about mine. I love yours because yours. Mine the- is the Seattle Seahawks. <laughs> <laughs> if you're out there, play Seattle week one. So maybe these are in order of your uh, yes yes this would be so, the order because i love i mean i when I, any league that i was in if i couldn't get baltimore which was kind of my my team i was trying to draft i would then go to the cowboys because of what mike said about their upcoming schedule um but you want to talk defense versus offense right this yeah. this is a scary one but if you're out there and there's no other options i think you can take a gamble on the detroit lions because they're playing the arizona cardinals Yes, the exciting air raid. Number one overall pick, Kyler Murray led Arizona Cardinals. The hope is that the Cardinals are going to torch the world, but we haven't seen it yet. I don't hope they torch the world. That sounds (laughs) scary. We, We haven't seen it yet. We haven't seen the air raid. We did see against the Oakland Raiders, the only time in preseason where there were blitzes and they blitzed all the time, that that frustrated Kyler Murray, and they got sacks. They've got 
Snacks as well. Snacks Harrison on the <laughs> defensive line. Darius Slay out there shutting sure. some guys down. So I think that it's one of those things where you've got a rookie quarterback. There's a lot of unknown. He's the type that he will take sacks. He doesn't take hits, but he'll just go down. If you're close enough to him behind the line of scrimmage, he'll slide, which I think is smart, but you get fantasy points for that. I like. I think for Kyler Murray's sake, it's nice that he's at home in week one. I'll tell you that to get they, at least they get. If you're looking for the upside of like I'm, I don't know what to do with Kyler. I own Kyler in a lot of leagues because I drafted him late as that secondary option, and I don't know whether to play him or not. To see what I got or see what I got. Yeah, it's, it's going to be really, interesting. It's really tough. All right, um, head and shoulders, offense for your hair, defense for a flake free scalp. Check it out on Walmart.com or at your local Walmart. We're going to close today's show out. As always, we want to thank Pristine Auction for being our studio sponsor. A Matt Breida signed jersey went for $41 yesterday, guys. I mean, it's $41. Matt Breida is always undervalued. Everywhere. Always. Always. So check them out. PristineAuction.com. Use the registration code BALLERS, and you'll get $5 towards the sports memorabilia purchase. We'll be back with you tomorrow morning. It's going to be a lot of fun. Take care. It's season time. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. We also want to thank Navy Federal. They are proud to serve over 8 million members, including active duty military, the DOD veterans, and their families. You'll receive a lifetime of membership benefits with Navy Federal, and you can easily access accounts, transfer money, pay bills, and deposit checks with the Navy Federal mobile app. Visit NavyFederal.org slash footballers for more information or call 1-888-842-6328 or download the Navy Federal Credit Union app. Message and data rates may apply.